Hi, I'm Maria Lang, a Solutions Architect at Losan. Once you're getting data from your devices, the next step is to look at it. Losan's data visualization tools help developers create and publish beautiful, data-rich dashboards directly to your end users. And it's all done with an easy-to-use drag-and-drop interface. Throughout this video, I will be working off of the Losan Industrial Equipment Monitoring application template, which can be found within Losan's application template library. So let's dive in. In this application, we have two different dashboards. One is an overview and one is a specific generator details. We're going to start off on our overview dashboard screen. Starting from the top, you can see we have a large GPS location block. What this is doing is displaying the location of the generators in this application. If I were to click on one of these location pins, I get a pop-up bubble that gives me specific information for that generator. Along the side, I have several gauge blocks that are displaying the max, min, and average temperature of the devices. I have more gauge blocks here for fuel, a time series graph or graph block that's showing me average fuel level over time, and then the same thing with voltage. Finally, I have a device list block here in the bottom right corner that's showing me the five devices that I'm currently monitoring in this application. If I want more specific information on one of those devices, I can click on it in this device table and it takes me to the generator details dashboard. So now from this dashboard, from the top, I have indicator blocks showing me specific information as well as some gauge blocks. I have another time series graph block and then I have a status block over time that indicates um, status, so running or faulted state of the generator over time. So the time series graph block is one of our most commonly used blocks. So let's dive in and see how that's set up. Every dashboard block within LoSant starts off the same way. We have the block overview. This includes your header and then any description you want to put in for this block itself. You then get to decide what data type you're going to use. Is it going to be live stream or historical? In this case, we're using historical, which means that we have to set a duration and a resolution for the historical data. Once that's all set up, I can then begin setting up, bringing in attribute data for the, the specific device itself. Let's go ahead and look at um, output, output current. Now you can see here the device ID tags, I have a context variable here. I don't have a specific device and that could be a little bit confusing. So we're going to talk about context variables in just a second. But what context variables allow you to do is create one dashboard and display hundreds of different devices on it. I then select the attribute that I want to monitor. In this case, it is the output current. And I'm doing it over five minute intervals. So I need to aggregate that data. And in this case, I'm going to take the mean of the data. There are lots of different aggregation options. It just depends on what you're trying to display. The next section of this setup is our display settings. So what do you want the label to say? You can see here I have output current and then amps in parentheses. And that matches the output current amps right here at the bottom of our graph. I can then set up, I can make it a line chart, a bar chart, or an area chart. And if you notice, the graph on the right 
updates as you input this information. So it's updating in real time so you know exactly what you're creating. You also have the ability to transform the data right here in the dashboard block. So if you want to maybe convert it to a different unit or something along those lines, you can provide that expression here in the data transformation section and it will do that for you and display it accordingly in the dashboard block. And finally, you have the ability to format the Y axis label or the Y axis. And this is great because in this case, we have some values that are really high in the thousands. And then we have some values that are smaller single digit units. So it's helpful to be able to format your Y axis and you can have the two different options. So once you're done, you can save the block and it populates it on your dashboard. Once it's on the dashboard, you can drag it, you can make it resize it and then drag it around and place it in different positions. Now I mentioned context variables when we were inside the time series graph block. So what, so if we want to create a context variable or manage it, you come into your settings for your dashboard and you can click on manage dashboard context. So already I have two context variables built, but let's say I'm going to add one. So you can add one according to these different values. I'm going to do device ID because that's what I'm using in this dashboard. And what you do is you need a unique name that you're going to reference inside of all the dashboard blocks, a default value. And then this block, this checkbox is super important. So if you want to include device tags, those metadata values, you need to click this box. This will also allow you to get all of the attribute data for the device itself. And then finally is this validation. This is a really, this is where those metadata tags come in handy. So if I want to just create a dashboard that's only for generators, I can go by dashboard recipe generator. So it's only going to pull up, it's only going to allow devices that were created using the generator device recipe. And that's going to ensure that I'm only showing generators. So if I had two different types of data or two different types of devices I was monitoring, saying a generator and an air conditioning unit, this this dashboard is only going to display generators. So another dashboard block that is very commonly used is our gauge block. So jumping into this, you can see the same information we had, the same options we had in our time series graph block with a block overview, data type, and duration. Now when I jump into my block data, I have my context variable. I chose manifold temperature, which is what I'm going to display. I want to display the last value that was recorded. And then this is where the gauge block gets exciting. You have several different visualization tools. You can display just a number. You can do a dial, a battery, a thermometer, which because we're, we're monitoring temperature, this is the most logical, or say a tank so you could display level. So like I said, I'm using the thermometer. I have my degrees Fahrenheit here for the label, and then I set a min and a max value for the thermometer itself. Now once you create, once you put all that information in there, you can now put conditionals into your gauge block. So in this case, if my value is greater than 850, I want the color to be red. It is a great indicator from your dashboard that something is wrong. 
this generator is too hot. If it's underneath that value, it's going to go ahead and display in green, which is telling me that my generator is operating at a safe condition. If you want to add a dashboard block, all you need to do is come into your settings and hit add block. There are all of these different blocks, pre-built blocks that you can utilize and drop directly into your dashboard. Now, once your dashboard is created, it has the ability to be added directly or displayed directly inside of an end user experience. And from that end user experience, that's where you get the ability to add your own label or your own um, branding and color scheme. And you can drop this beautiful dashboard that you just built directly into it. And that way, anytime you want to make an adjustment, say add a block, resize it, it will go live the second that you do that in your end user experience so that your end user is able to utilize their dashboard to its full capacity. Now, if you have, that covers all of the information for data visualization. If you would like to learn more, I would recommend looking into Low Saint University which provides a deeper dive into what I covered today. You can also explore our documentation and forums. Or if you're ready to get started and jump into LoSan, you can do that today by creating a Sandbox account. Mm -hmm.